Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL 17 Hasu League round of 32 group G. We got Aegis going up against Krokon. Bottom right hand corner, Krokon starting as the black Zerg. Upper left hand corner, we got Aegis starting as the hot pink Zerg. This is going to be on Polypoid. Full map reveal there. And we'll see how Aegis does. Krokon actually putting up some good matches versus Hedgic. ZVZ is one of those matchups that I'm not sure what to say about it. It's it can it's not coin flippy as I think people make it out to be these days. However, it is one of those matchups where nearly anything can happen and there are a lot more options. There's a lot more variance. That's actually what I want to say. So there in certain matchups like TVP, there's a certain MMR, uh, MMR variance where it's like if you and you can think of it like a percentage spread where a player who's 200 MMR above will win I don't know, 80% or 60% of the, the time. I do feel like in ZVZ, there's the largest variance across MMR, where you can have like someone who's 400 MMR higher in a ZVZ match, and it's still like a 70% win rate versus something that would be higher in another matchup. Hopefully, the you guys can visualize what I'm talking about in the brain and uh, understand what I'm getting at overall. It looks like we have an... I do feel like the ZVZ meta has moved away from just straight up coin flip, though. Uh, across the board, mostly because of the advent of Queen and Larva's play. Although they play it so sharply, how do I put this? They play it on such a razor's thin edge that it's really hard to mimic on at, at other levels. Anyway, Overlord making its way top right. We have Aegis' Overlord making its way top right. Additional Overlords. This is cross position, so neither player is going to end up with the Overlord advantage. I feel like that is one factor. Ooh, in base, miss this. In base hatchery this time from Aegis, spawning pool, and extractor to follow. And we'll see, yeah, Krokon gonna go for an expansion himself. And this is very reminiscent of previous matches that we've seen in this series. I think it is gonna be ch more challenging for Aegis in this instance because he's going to have more larvae to work with that are easier to defend. Krokon will have the second gas more available to him more rapidly. But, uh,. A little bit of a late move to gas as well, which could give Aegis a slight edge. But more often than not, what you'll see with the in-base 2 hatchery is early Zergling pressure. It is possible going up against the 12 hatch that Aegis might fold back to grabbing his own expansion, uh, expansion trying to defend with Zerglings. That does mean that Krokon potentially could end up with an advantage overall if he can hold this natural expansion. It's kind of at a positional disadvantage where he has to defend more territory. He has to defend the ramp the hatchery on the exterior and is keep the zergling count high win those fights but in theory if he can hold then he will end up with yeah there's the zergling speed upgrade if he can hold he'll end up with access to a faster gas he in the meantime is teching to layer and we are not we are seeing a tech to layer opposite side from Aegis. Aegis not finding bases initially sending out an exploratory zergling to garner information that was a nice pullback from Aegis. So, and let's, I like this. Look at this. Okay, this is good, good ZVZ right here. Just leaving four Zerglings on the ramp, not leaving and pulling off the additional Zerglings he has to disguise the build. So at this stage, Krokon is potentially thinking, okay, this is just, you know, an in-base nine gas, whatever, or a over pool, nine pool, whatever. He's dropping a creep colony preventatively just in case. Actually, no, it looks like he's got a read. How does he have a read on this? So he's got the creep colony dropping. The Zergling's going to go in and uh, spot that. Has made it all the way into the main. Might even be able to harass some drones right here. So that's going to be punishing on Krokon's part. But man, what a read on Krokon's part. Seeing the four Zerglings and recognizing that, okay, I'm just going to withdraw. So Aegis now has Zergling speed. Maybe it was the Zergling speed that... Uh, although I think Zergling speed was canceled. These Zerglings are moving at the same... Raid, it looks like, unless I'm mistaken. <clears throat> One drone picked off, though. Krokon still up a drone. Spire timing was spotted. Aegis not going to be behind in the spire timing overall. He's produced a lot of Zerglings. Is up six supply, which is 12 Zerglings. Although this Zergling looks like it's going to be a little bit delayed on the fight. That sunken colony can clear quite a few Zerglings, though, depending on position. Now, the question is, is does Aegis group up as well? The timing of this might be... Might be solid. Is that going to be a second? Did that get spotted? 
Overlord spots the Zergling Flood incoming mid-map. Drones pulling off to try to defend. A evolution Chamber getting dropped to try to provide a blockade. Aegis still swarming in. The Zergling's having to go the far way around, however. The drone's doing a great drill on the front line, really negating that advantage. Aegis needs to win these fights and needs to win them considerably. And it looks like he is managing to do just that. Several drones down. There's no additional Zerglings in the main. We have a few, and this is as the Spire is spawning, which is going to give Aegis an opportunity to potentially get the air lead. He's working on the Spire to start, forcing drones off the line, which is costing additional economy. More drones picked off as they're trying to defend. It is going to be four lings versus four lings now. Interior to the main, some Scourge being produced. Is this, yeah, Scourge being produced by Age or by Krokon, I should say. The Zergling lead now in Krokon's favor. He's still up two drones somehow after all of that. Never mind, up one drone. Let's see if Aegis is now able to even it up and actually end up ahead by a single drone right there. And more Zerglings moving in. I expected Aegis to maybe go for the switch and start producing Mutalisks. Now he's doing so, but able to wipe out that natural expansion. View the Zerglings disengaged. And this might be the game. Wow, actually, this could be an easy win now overall. Overlord picked off. That is going to supply cap Aegis, but I believe Mutalisks were already in production. Yeah, just some Scourge opposite side. An okay drill right there, but this isn't going to be sufficient. GG from Krokon. We're going to move on to game two. Solid play from Aegis. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.